Welcome to the online course for medical terminology or the language of the medicine. Uh, the aim of this course is to teach you how to define and build the medical terms. Uh, you will learn the meaning of uh, each part of a complex medical term and uh, relationship among words, roots, uh, prefixes and suffixes. Let's start with some uh, basic elements. Uh, we start with pronunciation marks. Uh, pronunci pronunciation marks are used to aid the correct pronunciation throughout the text. Uh, they either uh, uh, express by the symbol, symbols over vowels, for example in uh, diacritical marks. Uh, we may have a curved symbol over the vowel uh, here uh, and we call it brief. Brief indicates the short sound of the vowel, like in the words uh, ever, it, not, and cut. As you see, the words go very fast over this vowel. And the other uh, symbol is the macron, as is the straight line, and indicates a long sound, like in the words rebirth, isle, over, and until. The other pronunciation mark is the capital letters or capitalization, which is used for showing the primary accent that we have in the letter. For example, the pronunciation of letter, uh, the, the word letter uh, indicates uh, that the, uh, the emphasis should be placed uh, on the first syllabus, uh, like letter. So go a little bit over the second syllable. Here are uh, some rules uh, regarding uh, certain letter combinations. Uh, in combination uh, of these uh, words, when they are combined, the vowels together like A and E or e O and E, uh, only the second vowel is pronounced. Uh, for example, in the word uh, Bursi, as you see, the word is end by A and E, but in pronunciation, we only pronounce the E and not the A. Uh, bursi is the plural of the word bursa. It's in anatomy, maybe we explain a little bit later. And uh, the other word, for example, pluri, which is also is the plural for the plura. And you know, plura is the uh, uh, layers around the uh, lungs. Or, for example, in the word rentgen, which is another word for the x-ray. And I will explain some words are coming based on the founder or the people who discovered uh, some disease or uh, some uh, kind of instrument later. Uh, the sound for some words depends on the uh, word that come after them. For example, the letter C or G. And then here, as you see, the letter C is followed by E, I, or Y, and they should be pronounced softly, like, for example, the word cerebellum or cerebrum, circumcision or cycle. In the letter G, also the uh, pronunciation should be soft as J, like in geriatric, giant, gyrate but sometimes we uh, don't have those uh, other uh, letters after them so we uh, supposed to uh, use those uh, or pronounce those words in the hard way like for example here in cardiac cost crude that the C is pronounced as K or gastric gonad or grave that the G is pronounced as G and we know those sounds as the hard sounds. Uh, some words can be related to, to a similar part even if the meanings uh, doesn't seem uh, related. For example here we have import, export, transport and support and uh, as you see all of these words are uh, sharing a part which is the port in all of them. And as a common part that many words made by them, we call
call those ki kind of words the root of the these words. The root is the base or the foundation of a word, regardless of uh, what other words, a unit or symbol may be attached to it. And if you have another example, you can guess what is the root of suffix, prefix, affix, or and fixation. Uh, easily you can answer it's the fix that you can see in all these words. This is the root of these words. As an example of a medical word, uh, well, you can guess what's the root of, for example, epigastric, gastralgia, and enterogastritis. And uh, if you look at it, and if you guess that the answer is gastr, G-A-S-T-R, then you have the correct answer. Well, if you look at the root, the root can be attached to prefix or to the suffix, or both of them. In the word epigastric, for example, epi is the prefix, and ik, I see, in the end, is the suffix. And as you see, suffix attaches to the end of the word, and prefix attaches to the beginning of the word. And when we talk about these words, the science of the origin and development of the word is also known as etymology, if you want to know. Uh, the root of the medical words is either Greek or it's Latin. And there are differences between them. Uh, Latin roots are uh, used to describe the anatomical structure. And uh, the, the Greek uh, uh, roots are used to describe a disease, a condition, treatment, or a diagnosis. Here, for example, we have the word skin. And the uh, Latin root is the cutane. And the Greek root is dermatus. So if we say, for example, cutaneous, it shows the anatomical or this pertaining to the skin and no disease or something like this. While, for example, dermatitis is uh, the skin inflammation, which shows the condition, inflammatory condition of the skin. Let's go to another example, for example, for kidney, uh, renus and nephros. And uh, when we say, for example, renal, it's also back to the uh, anatomical uh, uh, situation, for example, pertaining to the kidney, something that belongs to the kidneys. Or the Greek root is nephros. When we can say nephroma, it shows a tumor of the nephron, which is a disease we are describing. Uh, Sometimes a word uh, contains more than one root, two roots together. For example, osteoarthritis. The root uh, osteo means uh, bone and uh, uh, arch means joint. And uh, the suffix here is the itis, which means the inflammation. And the uh, roots here uh, are connected to each other by the combining form. So the combining form, it can be either uh, O or it can be I that come between two uh, words. It can be between two root or the, the root and the uh, prefix. is also important to know the rules regarding uh, the combining form. There are three major rules. Rule number one, if the suffix starts with a uh, uh, a vowel, uh, we don't need any combining form. We can just connect them, like in the word hepatitis. And because itis, the, uh, prefix, the suffix itis is uh, started with a vowel, so we can attach it directly to hepat, means uh, the liver. So this is the inflammation of the liver. The rule number two is uh, if the suffix doesn't start with a vowel, we should add the combining form, like for example, hepatocyte. Here the suffix is cite, it starts with the C, which is not a vowel, so we need a combining form, in this case the O, and become hepatocyte. And the rule number three, important, 
is uh, when we have two roots in one word, no matter what, we should combine them always by the uh, uh, one of O or I as combining form. Like here, osteoarthritis, despite of that, the fact that art started with A vowel, we use the O to co uh, combine osteo and art become osteoarthritis. As you see also in the end, art and itis, because itis is started with the I, we don't need the combining form over there. Uh, as a last part of this video, uh, some medical words are in honor uh, of those who discovered or described an anatomical structure or diagnosed a disease or either invented a medical instrument as I explained in the rentgen. Uh, these words is known as eponymous. And uh, if we uh, think about the eponymous words, uh, then uh, we can see that some example like fallopian tube, which is the uh, uterine tube, and this is named after the Gabriello Fallopio, which was a medical doctor from 16th century, or the other word like Eustachian tube, which a uh, auditory tube, uh, uh, back to auditory tubes, and this is named after Bartolomeo. Uh, Ostatio, which is, as you see, we are using their uh, name to remember those, and there are many of them. The disadvantage with eponymous is we cannot analyze them. We should just learn them the way they are. You cannot connect Ostatio to anything else. But uh, sometimes maybe you hear something that very strange, like someone says, oh, this is the Dr. Wilson, and Dr. Wilson actually the other name for pancreatic duct. So this is based on the practice that we are doing.